common links between rheumatoid arthritis and psoriatic arthritis is that at their core, they're both inflammatory arthritis. So we use inflammatory to distinguish it between difference between mechanical or degenerative arthritis, which is what most of us eventually get at some point. But at both these disorders, there can be an immune-based attack on the joints leading to pain, stiffness, and swelling of the joints. But that's kind of where the similarities end. The distribution of inflammatory joint disease is very different between psoriatic arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. So in rheumatoid, it's primarily peripheral arthritis, fingers, thumbs, wrists, uh, ankles and feet, although it could affect larger joints, but it's very symmetric. So if it's on one hand, it's probably the other one foot or one ankle, probably the other side too. Uh, and usually not much involvement in the spine. So there are some rare cases of rheumatoid affecting the cervical spine or neck, but that's not very usual and it almost never ever affects the lower spine or lumbar spine. On contrast, psoriatic arthritis could be very asymmetric. It could be one finger on one hand, but one wrist on the other hand, or it could be one toe on one side, but an ankle on the other side. And unlike rheumatoid, which is primarily a joint inflammation of the actual joint itself, joint meaning where two bones meet together, psoriatic arthritis can have other structures around the joint inflamed. So we call that the anthesis, which is the connection point between a tendon into the bone. Patients with psoriatic arthritis can get what's called anthesitis. Um, they could also get tendonitis, so recurrent ankle tendonitis, much more common in people with psoriatic arthritis. Inflammation of the soft tissues of the foot. Plantar fasciitis, more common in psoriatic arthritis. You wouldn't really see that in rheumatoid arthritis. And unlike rheumatoid, that doesn't usually affect the spine. The spine definitely could get involved in psoriatic arthritis. And particularly the lower spine called the sacroiliac joints, lumbar spine. These may be areas that we can image to give us a clue that if somebody has psoriasis and joint pain, is it connected to a whole body illness? So looking at the distribution of somebody's symptoms is really important. So when I interview a patient that has psoriasis, I am asking questions, do you have a history of ankle tendonitis, Achilles tendonitis, uh, do you have what's called a sausage digit or uh, dactylitis, has your finger or toe blown up like a sausage? I wouldn't ask that of rheumatoid arthritis because it's a different presentation.